We want to talk now about another rescue operation that we've been following in this program now for the last couple of nights. NBC's Carrie Sanders has been following the story of an American woman and two others have been trapped beneath a supermarket. There's a good outcome tonight. There is. Uh, it was about 24 hours ago that we were talking about how the South Florida Urban Search and Rescue Task Force and a team from Turkey were trying to tunnel their way in through this pancaked building. Well, miraculously, they made it to three people, including that woman from South Florida. They're alive. 110 hours after the quake, the collapsed five-story supermarket gave up a miracle. A seven-year-old girl and another, a man in his 20s, still alive. And hours later, Morel Dittmer emerged, dehydrated, covered in dust, but remarkably unscathed. Her brother-in-law, Fidel Amagrabi, never gave up hope. I had said a feeling here. that she's alive. The work was especially hard as tremors continued to shift the debris. You actually have to do almost a Superman in some of the areas because you can't do even elbow crawling. You have to actually extend yourself and just kind of like inchworm yourself. Our rescue specialists drilled holes on their backs, almost in a Michelangelo type fresco position, drilled, 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 and then chipped away all that. And then uh, with the first one came out almost like a pinata. The teams from Turkey and South Florida punched through the final concrete slab, first handing Morel a bottle of water, then a firefighter from Florida slipped his hand from cold concrete to a warm body. She realized at that moment that she, be, she will survive. In a strange small world connection, Morel lives in Pembroke Pines, Florida. Pembroke Pines paramedic Eric Fidgkis was the team member who first reached her and extracted her. I did not know that she is from Pembroke Pines, and that is amazing. Joseph Zalralban is another team member here, also from her hometown fire department. No better feeling in the world than to give somebody their family member back. In South Florida, her two boys got an early morning call telling them their mother was alive and now free. Her knees are injured from just being on her knees for five days. But other than that, she's absolutely fine. It's just wonderful news. These rescues are even more remarkable when you consider shortly after the quake, the first team in was from Venezuela and they pulled one person out alive. Then another team came in from Iceland. They pulled three people out alive. Then they brought in the sniffer dogs. Those dogs said nobody else was left alive. But they were wrong. Turns out they were smelling rotting meat. This is a supermarket after all. The Turks came and stuck with it. When they confirmed life, the American team joined and now they have confirmed two more are alive. But the debris is shifting as they near the 40-year-old man and the 30-year-old woman. Survivors hanging on, praying they're the next miracle. This situation now changes it because now we have to stop they're by themselves, everybody is out. We have to go and assess and then make contact with them again and tell them that we're going to slow it down. The teams have now started tunneling to those two victims inside that are still alive, 20 feet away from one side, 25 feet away from the other. But as you heard, it's extremely slow glowing and very dangerous because as they move forward and chip away, it's causing the building to shift and, and slip. A remarkable story tonight. Kerry Sanders, thank you very much.